Where do I even start? Hold on. Before we get to the guitar, I have to tell you something. Paul Reed Smith and I have been working on something together. You ready for this? A virtual music camp. August 10th through the 13th, there will be a huge amount of master classes in a virtual camp format that will be 100% live streaming. People all over the world will be tuning in to learn from musical masters like Tim Pierce, Paul Reed Smith, the Granger Brothers, Dennis Chambers, and a host of many more talented, awesome people. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be doing some teaching as well. The coolest thing is that it'll be like you're actually at a music camp, but you're in the comfort of your own home. The goal for this camp is to help aspiring musicians of all ages unlock their potential through focusing on the three pillars of music, harmony, melody, and rhythm. You'll have the opportunity to interact and ask questions directly through web chat, and you'll have a chance to win a brand new PRS guitar each day of the camp. And what does this have to do with the guitar we're about to see? Well, not a lot, but everything. I had Paul send me this guitar on a loan. I don't think uh, he would give me this one. The special thing about the guitar we're gonna see is it really kind of embodies everything that this camp is all about. Paul came to me with this idea with just the utmost amount of passion. If you've ever seen him on my YouTube channel in particular, he really just loves the guitar and loves music. That same amount of dedication and love went into building this guitar. This camp is for people who also love guitar and love music. It is for you guys and you will feel the difference it makes on your musicianship by the time it's over, I promise you. The camp is directed towards all instruments, but I know most of you guys are guitar player watching this video. Let me assure you, there are tons of guitar focused master classes for you to eat up. Registration for the four day experience is open now and the event will be live streamed on August 10th through the 13th from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. daily. And a portion of the proceeds from this event will go to Johns Hopkins Kimball Cancer Center in Baltimore. This is one of the most exciting moments of my musical career and I'm just so thankful and honored to be working so closely with Paul in this new musical environment. Without further ado, let's check out this guitar. I cut those birds out with a handsaw. Look at the feathers on the second bird. Can you see? You oh. can't do that with the CNC. Yeah, I've never seen I've never seen them like that. That's so meticulous. At the time I thought that that was just normal to cut the feathers and I didn't think it was a big deal. But when we were starting to use CNC machines to make the birds, you couldn't get them that fine. They'd break. They would have never been able to do it. The neck is bound in Brazilian rosewood. The rosewood matches the neck, the fingerboard so well, you can't see that it's bound. It feels like one piece of wood. Yes, that's the idea. The stripe is down the middle of the top. I didn't have a good joiner and I didn't have a good wood joint. The reason that the stripes are between the pickups is the neck went all the way into there and I had to cover it up with a piece of curly maple and so, and so then the joint needed to be covered. When I started making guitars, I realized the neck didn't have to go in that far and so I just made it go to the end of the pickup. The neck is exactly neck all the way to the nut and then it immediately becomes headstock. That neck shape goes all the way to the end of the fretboard and then quickly expands. The headstock's too close to your hand, so you play a diminished chord in the first position here and your hands will hit it. So it's, it's giving me that extra room. And this nut? I made it myself and it was done on a lathe and a milling machine. The axle of the rollers is being held in with HO gauge railroad spikes. <laughs> now, Seymour Duncan made those pickups for me. That's a Duncan Custom and a 59. He, he, he special made those. Those are Patillo fret wire. See how they're triangular? Leo Patillo fret wire. It was a special thing that was being made at the time to make the uh, position that the chords play a better tune. The back plate is made out of brass so that you never walk out of your jack chord and break. The back plates are made of clear plastic and they're spray painted on the back because I couldn't buy black plastic. Why couldn't you buy black plastic? 
I don't know. I didn't know how to get it, so I used to buy picture frames and I would cut them up. And these are these are locking. Yeah. What we use now. Yeah, they're like mini versions. Yeah, I would drill a hole in the headstock. I'd thread it with a bottom tap, and then I'd cut a slot with a with a slotting saw so that you could put a penny in it to tight, tighten it. See, there's it's exactly the width of a penny. Yeah. I figured everybody had a penny in their pocket. <laughs> so Neil Sean was the only owner or primary owner? Only, only owner. Yeah, you understand the guitar came back to PRS's archives because Neil wanted it to be in the archives for so people like you could hold it. Very generous and sweet and understanding of history and stuff. He also said to me, because I know it's going to be worth a lot of money, but I'd rather have it. Over $100,000 this is worth, I'm sure. Easy. Is it worth two fifty? Is it worth an old Les Paul? I've played, I've been lucky enough to play all sorts of vintage guitars that are absorbent amounts of money and this one, you know you, when you when you handle a guitar that's worth that much, you can kind of feel the mojo. Are the inlays made of curly abalone? Uh, how can I tell? It's like curly maple, but it's abalone. They have stripes in them like curly. Yeah, that's curly abalone. That's the shiznit. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. See you, Paul.